G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, markets picked up a little bit, which is good, back over that $2 trillion mark. But again, we're really just kind of in a ranging motion at the moment. Nothing too extreme to the upside and nothing too extreme to the downside in the market. Now, don't get me wrong, individual coins themselves, some are definitely rocketing up and some are definitely dumping really, really hard. But I mean, look at this, Bitcoin dominance continues to drop. Now it's 53%. We are getting oh so close to like a legit altcoin season. When Bitcoin dominance drops below 50%, yeah, that's when things are going to start to go really crazy. I mean, they're already starting to pick up as is. But yes, 2 trillion, back over that. BTC dominance under 54%, so now 53.5. ETH dominance dropping and gas 108 but look, it's just basically a sea of green at the moment. But then we can come to tomorrow and there'll probably be pretty much a sea of red or at least a day or two after that. It is Friday now here in Australia, so the weekend is upon us. You know, was that sell-off that we had yesterday the general weekend sell-off that we had? Or is it still going to play out that come Sunday we have a bit more of a sell-off again? Only time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. But things are looking pretty good there. Now let's have a look. 24 hours. What's really pumped? What's done well? All right. Pundi X, Bitcoin Gold, Engine Coin just continues to do well. That is really, really nice to see. Pancake Swap, Pundi X Old. Again, I'm, yeah, I don't know what's the difference between Pundi. Uh, I'm guessing it was a little bit like Aave and the old Land Token. They probably made uh, less of them because the uh, price is somewhat similar. Fit five. $5.62 compared to uh, 0.0058. So, yeah, I, I would say they probably took, you know, like 10 or 30 of the old coins or something and put them into one of these coins. I'm only guessing. I haven't actually checked up on that, but that's what I get the feeling from. But anyway, lots of green there. And I mean, look, there's at least probably 10 coins there that are 15% up and above. And look, plenty that are you know, not too far under it. So XRP continues to move. Now it's a dollar five. So well done to XRP. Stacks is up. Thorchain. Hedera Hashgraph. Plenty of coins that are doing quite well. BitTorrent just continues to go up. Has had a bit of a retracement, but anyway, still continuing to go up. All right. What about any coins that haven't done so well in the last 24 hours? Has there been any that have not done well? No. Have a look at that. It's basically sort of stable coins almost uh, that have not done so well and we spoke about Faye protocol the other day so that's supposed to be a stable coin and it's down around 76 cents so if you've got that stable coin that's really really hurting uh, helium hasn't really lost too much it's still up 60 percent uh, terra usd like i said uh, stable coin uh, type sort of moves solana lost a little bit usdc coin Binance USD, die, die. So yeah, really, other than Solana, uh, there hasn't really been any losses whatsoever except for Fay Protocol. But again, that's supposed to be a stable coin. So I'm not sure what's happened there. I do personally think there's too many stable coins out there anyway. We only need, you know, one or two stable coins from each sort of country. Well, really one. It's whatever, you know, stable coin you want to use, whether it's, you know, a US one, a... A European one or an Australian one or a China one whatever it may be excuse me I think you can have you know one stable coin from each uh, sort of nation but after that I don't think you really need a whole lot more but anyway look maybe that's just the way of the future and the way things are going but losses almost none and gains well there are gains are plenty so again that's just people buying the dips and they are taking profits very quickly as well my guess is there's a lot of traders at the moment and they're you know, trying to sell at the highs and buy back in at the lows and things like that. Probably leverage trading and things like that going on as well. But anyway, the market's up over $2 trillion again. And, you know, where to from here? That is the question. Can we get to, you know, $4 trillion? Can we get to $5 trillion? Can we get to $10 trillion? That is going to be very, very interesting. Now, let's just have a quick check of the Bitcoin. Where are we? Yep, so the market cap is over a trillion, which is really, really good because that takes up most of the market, really. You know, 50% of the market anyway. And as long as Bitcoin's generally doing okay, it can be trading sideways and losing a little bit here and there, just as long as it's not completely and utterly dumping because once it starts to do that, 
well then it's not too far away before the altcoins and everything start to do it as well all right let's move on to the charts here we go so again this was the range that we're in we broke out of that uh, range and now we're just kind of traveling sideways and there really isn't too much volatility happening in Bitcoin at all on the daily anyway I mean this was you know crazy volatility and things that we've seen over here but you know really we can go back to since the 13th of March so that's nearly a month there hasn't been too much volatility I mean there's been a tiny bit what do we got from here so we've had 20% sort of volatility you know over basically a month now again that was just that steep no, I wouldn't even say steep but you know there was that drop off but then we pretty quickly regained that and now we're just traveling sideways so for me yeah Bitcoin's just in a ranging period and it's done this before we spoke about this I mean we had sort of this kind of stuff going on and look what happens after it boom you just start to make these really big moves and again we've done this before so here we kind of range sideways, range sideways, range sideways. Now this was, again, that old Bart Simpson head pattern, but this was the start of all the rest of it. So these sideways trading kind of things, they usually lead to explosive moves. In a bull market, it's going to be to the upside, but in a bear market, well, it's probably, well, you don't really get these too often in a bear market. This is usually uh, a bottoming formation. When you see this, you're probably at the bottom of the bear market because they're usually... Yeah, they don't do prolonged periods uh, like this in a bear market. It's just constantly going downwards. But we'll have to wait and see anyway. That's the Bitcoin market at the moment. So traveling sideways, not too much volatility, volatility at all. So again, you know, does this mean that things are just kind of simmering and getting ready to explode? And will it be to the upside? And again, a lot of people are talking about the Coinbase IPO. Is that going to be the catalyst to send Bitcoin and just cryptocurrencies in general much higher? We'll have to wait and see. Let's get on to some stories. So NFTs, we saw a story the other day that you know a lot of NFTs were down 70%. That's because a lot of NFTs are just junk. That's literally all they are. They're more collectible stuff, and if you like them, that's great, but you're probably not going to make a whole lot of money on them in the future. But there are some legit good ones out there. I just unfortunately am not uh, artsy enough to know. But the crypto punk NFTs, it seems as though Christie is a now is Christie's is now about to sell off some. So Christie's is auctioning off nine crypto punks, the NFTs tied to tiny pixelated portraits, and that's these up here. Now, Christie's was responsible for selling the $69 million sale of Beeple's everyday uh, NFT. <sighs> I mean, yeah, they. <laughs> I don't know. Would you buy them? I, I suppose if you're really, really into, you know, the, the history behind, you know, cryptocurrency and all of that, yeah, I guess it depends on how much they're going for as well. I mean, I wouldn't pay millions of dollars for them. But don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that they're not worth millions of dollars. Just me, I wouldn't pay millions of dollars for them. And again, that's why I don't buy NFTs. I'm just not artsy enough. But look, this crypto space, it still has so much more to go, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. And even NFTs, we haven't seen the true explosion of them yet. It's just people were jumping in and buying any old NFT, uh, things that literally don't have any real intrinsic value sort of behind them. And they were just a pretty picture and they thought, oh yeah, NFTs, they're all going to 10x, 50x and, you know, 100x. So they bought them and they've lost 70% of them. That's, you know, unfortunate, but that's where I see most NFTs. They're just, yeah, you're not going to make any money with them unless you're lucky and you can flip them really, really quickly. You're probably just going to lose money. So I've said this a million times before. I'm just investing in the platforms that they're on. So like Engine, um, you know, NFT is going to be on Polkadot and Cardano and all the rest of it. So they're the things that I'm investing in, not the actual NFTs themselves because I just don't know enough about them and to understand what's going to be worth a whole lot in the future and what's not. But... NFTs, they're still being sold and Christie's getting into the picture. All right. Crypto mum, Hester Pierce, she's come out and, uh, you know, stuck up for the crypto space, which is really, really good. 
and she's come out and said attempts by governments to stop people from trading Bitcoin won't go well, according to Crypto Mum. You'd have to shut down the internet, and that's very, very true. Uh, no, I've gone past that. All right, so yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. How, how could you possibly try and shut it down? It, it's impossible, and you're better off simply regulate it and moving with the times rather than trying to uh, stop it. And yeah, you see all these stories. I think it was Ray Dalio come out and said, you know, the cryptocurrency is going to get banned by governments and things like that. No, they're going to try. Some of them will, like India and all of that. But if other big countries simply adopt them, then they'll get left behind. And that's the problem. Let's say the US comes out and says, all right, we ban cryptocurrencies, but Europe doesn't, China doesn't, uh, Australia doesn't, and all these other countries don't. Guess who gets left behind and will basically be in the doldrums of the whole financial revolution? The US, and I'm not saying the US is going to do it. I'm sure they're wise enough to know what's coming, and they now know that it can't be stopped, that it's just here to stay. Get on board, regulate it, you know, make sure it's good regulation, not over-regulation, and yeah, ride the wave of the future. That's basically what it comes down to. And I don't think any country is really going to ban cryptocurrencies. They might for a very short period, like you know, India may, but once all the other countries are doing it, then India will have no choice but to get on board. They just simply can't be left behind. There's too much money, too much yeah, growth that they will miss out on. And so they simply won't do it. All right, Robin Hood, the app. They are up 448% uh, from quarter four. And that's the amount of pe people who are trading crypto. So Robinhood says 9.5 million people traded crypto on its app. So the online brokerage service Robinhood said on Thursday that 9.5 million of its customers traded cryptocurrency on its platform in quarter one of 2021. That's up 1.7 million in, uh, that's, sorry, that's up I'm really struggling at the moment. I'm still a little bit uh, crook from the other day, but that's up from just 1.7 million in quarter four of last year. So they have basically 5X'd the amount of people that are trading cryptocurrency in a matter of months. So again, we need to take all this in mind when we come back here and we see that things are just kind of ranging at the moment. This is what happens and it's eventually gonna grow and it's gonna get to that steaming point. I use the kettle. You know, when you first put the water in, turn the kettle on, it takes a while before you see the first little bubble and then the second little bubble and then there's a couple of bubbles and it just starts to kind of build and build and build until that kettle just starts to whistle and goes off its head. And that's what's happening here. We're in a ranging motion at the moment. It's just building, building, building before the next big move comes. And I do believe it'll be to the upside, but this could last a while. I mean, again, this is the 21st of Feb we've been sort of ranging. We haven't been able to kind of break that high. And we are now getting very, very close to the 21st of April. We're not too far. So that's, you know, February, March, April. There's two months of sort of ranging. I mean, we had a bit of volatility here. But once we got up here, the volatility is just starting to slow. And it's going to simmer and we'll get some sideways motion. Again, look, it may stretch out to May, who knows where, before we then make the next big move. And I do think it'll be to the upside. I don't think we're ready for a big move to the downside yet. I really think that's going to come when Bitcoin gets closer to that $100,000 range. I do think you'll see some heavy sell-off uh, in all the cryptocurrencies at 100,000, but I don't think that will be the end of the Bitcoin market. I think that'll just be a great buying opportunity and it goes higher from there. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. That's what I see happening. All right, Reef Finance. So Reef's Basket V1 is intended to function in a similar manner to traditional ETFs. So I spoke about Reef, Reef Finance a little while ago. I did build myself a position in them. And look, they, they haven't been doing too well price-wise at all. There was a lot of conjecture uh, and things going on about them. But look, I'm still in it. I still believe they can do well. So I'll continue. Reef Finance, a decentralized finance ecosystem powered by Polkadot, has released a new investment product aimed at helping passive investors gain access to a broader portfolio of cryptocurrencies. 
Reef Baskets V1 is described as an Ethereum-based framework for deploying collections of DeFi tokens and other crypto assets. So it's like investing uh, in a pool of a whole stack of things. As I said here, it's a bit like an ETF. You know, instead of you know trying to pick the individual DeFi projects that you think you're going to do well, you go and invest in the uh, basket, and it's got a whole stack of DeFi ones. So if one DeFi project isn't doing so well at one time, and others are doing well, then it makes up for it. But you'd still need to understand that DeFi hasn't been doing uh, great for the last little while. It's kind of been ranging sideways. That's what it does. It has these explosive growths, sells off a little bit then starts to go sideways for a while and then starts to kick off. And that's what all the crypto markets do. NFTs do the same, you name it. They all kind of go up, lose a bit, travel sideways, go up, lose a bit, travel sideways, and it just repeats itself until it gets to the end. And then it is just the big sell-off before the bear market. All right, Bitmain. So Bitcoin mining company Riot Blockchain has decided to expand its mining capacity by purchasing 42,000 amp miners from Bitmain. So that's a, that's a, lot, of, uh, a lot of miners that they're buying, 42,000, and they're going to come in installments as well. So the purchase was worth at least $138.5 million, and it's part of the company's plan to increase its Bitcoin mining hash rate, aiming at 77 ETA hashes by mid-2021, uh, and that's an increase in the target by more than 90%. So Bitmain, Bitmain sorry, will be developing 2,000 SJ, S19J ant miners per month starting in November 2021, continuing through to 20, October 2022. So again, when you see and hear things like that, maybe that extended Bitcoin cycle is... Yeah, something that's really going to happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Maybe the Bitcoin cycle will run to at least October. Again, look, maybe not. We don't know. I think the end of this cycle will be around sort of Christmas time this year for at least Bitcoin. And then maybe January, February, March, something like that for the altcoins. Could be completely wrong. Maybe it comes earlier. You know, BitBoy's come out and said he believes it's happening in September. Only time will tell. We'll know who's right and who's wrong. And look, don't you know, jump out and do anything based on anything I say. I'm just providing you some insight and some information that I've found. I don't claim to be an oracle or know everything by any stretch of the imagination. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, you have to take, you know, a whole stack of information in and make up your own mind to make the best decision. Because there is no one person out there that knows it all. If they did, they'd be the richest person in the world. And I think that's Jeff Bezos. And I don't think he's into cryptocurrencies too much at the moment. So he probably wouldn't even be the best person to take financial advice. When it comes to cryptocurrencies, any other financial advice, I think he'd be great for. Uh, but outside of uh, you know the traditional markets, I don't know how much he knows about cryptocurrencies. But he's probably getting in right now and is probably going to make a fortune. So that's something to consider as well. All right, last but not least. So Coinbase, it seems they've joined the DeFi Alliance. So Coinbase announced in a tweet on Thursday it had joined the DeFi Alliance. Now the DeFi Alliance was launched in early 2020 and its uh, a name is the Chicago DeFi Alliance. And the group provides mentorship and funding for early stage tech teams working in the $49 billion decentralized finance sector. Now, DeFi includes technologies that could one day make decentralized exchanges obsolete. It 100% will. We won't need centralized anymore. But I guess, you know, even these DeFi things, they are somewhat centralized, as in they are an entity. It's just there's no one owner. So, you know, decentralized, yes, but centralized in some other ways as well. But look, interesting that they have got uh, on board and are part of the DeFi Alliance now. So the weekend is coming. We had that retracement yesterday. But generally over at least the last couple of months, Sunday's been the day where things have really dropped off. So, you know, maybe the dip that we had yesterday wasn't you know, kind of the bigger dip that we could have on Sunday, or maybe it was because, you know, we're going back, uh, you know, more than a few months ago, it was quite often the dip was coming sort of Thursday night uh, and sort of Friday morning. So maybe that was it. And that's just something we need to keep an eye out for. 
All right, that's it from me. I'm still a bit under the weather, so I do apologize. The quality of my videos is not the greatest at the moment, but I definitely need to uh, get myself well and try and uh, you know, make some better content, but I'll still try to pull out uh, content daily anyway, and hopefully it's not completely and utterly garbage. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. Everything's looking pretty good at the moment, and I'll see you next time.